Hello everyone, thanks for stopping in. Today we're going to be talking about Math 100, and we're going to be continuing in Chapter 3. Now today we're going to start by talking about slopes. So let's define what a slope is. A slope is a line's ratio of its change in y value over its change in x value. Now, it's the line's ratio of its change in y value over its change in x value. Now, the symbol for slope is the letter m. We use a lowercase m for slope. It's the change in y over the change in x. It's the ratio of its change in y over its change in x. A lot of people like to remember this using the phrases rise over run because that has some alliteration to it. RR, right? Rise over run. Now the actual formula requires two values. It has y2 minus y1. That's not a number 2. It's just using the same letter twice. So you have one number minus another number. Over, and then you have x2 minus x1. And same thing. So there's four values in this equation. y1, y2, x1, and x2. And that's for the points x1, y1. You know, we have an x and a y from a first point on our line. And our second point would be x2, y2. Now, we're going to have some examples of some slopes. First, the example of slope, the first one we're going to look at, we're going to have four. So I'm going to draw four axes in. And I'm going to draw four lines, the four possibilities. The first two are upward slope and downward slope. The next one is a flat slope, a horizontal and the last one is a vertical slope, a vertical line. This slope is called positive, and it will be a positive number. It's a positive slope. It's going upwards. This one would be a negative slope because it's going downwards. It will be a negative number. Maybe this one's positive 3 quarters and this one's negative 2 fifths, right? Positive and negative numbers. This, the horizontal line, is a slope of 0. Here, m would be equal to 0. It has no change in y. The top part is equal to 0. As my x value changes, the y value never changes. And then the vertical line has an undefined slope. There is no slope for a vertical line. It's undefined. Vertical lines have no slope. And if you think about it, it's because there's no change in x, right? If I'm a vertical line, I'm sitting at the same x value anywhere on my line. The x value never changes. So I'd have a 0 in the bottom. There's no change in x, right? So let's take a gander at an example of this. We have the points negative 1, negative 3, and 1, 5. So if I want to plug in to my slope formula... It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right? What I do is I, you know, this is my first point. This is my second point. So these are my y values, right? 5 and negative 3. Well, my second y value is 5 minus my first y value is negative 3.
over, let's see, my second x value is 1 minus my first x value is negative 1, right? Notice I'm using the y values first, then the x values second. It's rise over run. Now, in the top, I see a double negative. That'll become 5 plus 3, right? Which 5 plus 3 gives me 8 in the top. In the bottom, 1 minus negative 1, well, that's a double negative again. That'll be 1 plus 1, and that'll give me 2. And you always reduce your fractions, right? That reduces to plain old 4. So my slope of the line passing through the points negative 1, negative 3, and 1, 5 is 4. Let's sketch what's going on real quick. Let's do a real quick sketch. We need five dashes to cover all of our distance. We're just going to draw a quick picture of our line and take a look at the slope. Let's see, negative 1, negative 3, negative 1, negative 3, and 1, 5, 1, 5. So I'm looking at the slope between these dots, right? That's the line I'm looking at. And it should make sense. That's a positive slope, right? It's upwards. And it's kind of steep. It's 4. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have the slope here. We've calculated the slope of this line. Now, point slope formula for an equation of lines. This is an equation to represent a line. If you have a slope m and a point, so you have m is the slope, and let's say x1, y1 is a point on your graph. You know these values exist. You know the slope and you know a point. Then you can do y minus y1. y is a variable. y1 will be a number, right? Whatever number came from your point equals, and you'll have m x minus x1. That's the point slope formula. So you have your two variables, y and x, and you'll plug in the values from your slope and your point. That's why it's called point slope form. And this can give you an equation of a line. So if you know the point, if you know the slope and you know a point on your line, you can always write its equation. So for example, if we wanted to use this point, let's say we wanted to use 1, 5. My graph would be y minus 5 equals 4, because that's the slope, x minus 1. Right? I'm using 1, 5 as my point. So my point was 1, 5, 1, 5, and my slope was 4, right? That was for this graph here. So this equation here, the graph of this line would be y minus 5 equals 4 times x minus 1. And I could manipulate it now as I see fit. I can distribute, I can move stuff around, right? I can actually figure out what's going on here. The next formula is slope-intercept form. And here, the formula is y equals mx plus b. And here, m is equal to the slope and the point 0, comma, b is equal to the y-intercept. The b value is for the y-intercept. So it tells you where the graph hits the y-intercept. So that's slope-intercept form. So if you know the slope and you know the y-intercept, you can get slope-intercept form. We'll be using this in just a moment. Because we can graph using slope-intercept form. So here, step one is identify m and b. If you're using slope-intercept form, you want to identify your m and b, right? This is y equals mx plus b. You want to identify m and b. Step two, you plot the intercept. You plot using the b. You plot the intercept. 
And then the last step is you use M to count to another point. And then you can graph the line because now you'll have two points. And let's take a look at an example. It'll make sense once we see an example. Let's take a look. We have negative 3x plus 1. So m is negative 3 and b is positive 1, right? Now, m is negative 3. I'm going to make that a fraction, negative 3 over 1. Because slopes are normally fractions, right? When it's a whole number, it might be more useful to think of it as a fraction. Rise over run, right? The run here is 1. Now, b is 1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my axes. And I'm not really sure how many I'll need. So I'm just going to toss in five lines in every direction. I can always add extra dashes if I need, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's see what's going on here. B is 1. B is 1. That tells you where on the y-axis to start. B equals 1. I'm going to start at 1. It tells you the y-intercept using the slope and the y-intercept, right? The B tells me... The value is 1. Now I'll use the slope. What I'm going to do now is count. I'm going to use my blue pen now. Actually, we'll use this pen here instead. We're going to count. Rise over run. Rise is negative 3. I'm going to count down 1, 2, 3 hops. I'm counting down 3 hops. Rise was negative 3. And then the run is 1. I'm going to go right 1. Because it runs 1. And that point right there will be my second point. Because now I can connect these dots to get the graph of y equals negative 3x plus 1. Notice we used the dots we started with to find the second one. We used the slope, right? Now let's do another one. Let's take a look at another one. This one says 4x minus 3y equals 9. 4x minus 3y equals 9. And it says first rewrite the equation in slope-intercept form and then graph it. So I need to put it into y equals mx plus b form. This is why in chapter 2 we were learning how to solve for a variable. My goal is to get y equals stuff. Well, the first thing I got to do to get y alone is take away 4x from both sides, right? We got to take away 4x from both sides. That'll leave me with negative 3y. Negative 3y equals, these are unlike terms, right? But I'm going to put the x term, negative 4x plus 9 first, right? The 9 is positive, so it would be plus 9. I'm going to write it in that order, just because that's the order we generally want to see it. Now, I almost have y alone. I have to divide by negative 3. And remember, you have to divide everything by negative 3. So here, these will cancel, and I'll be left with y equals. A negative over a negative is a positive, right? 4 over 3 does not reduce. I'll leave it 4 over 3x. Now, 9 over 3, well, that'll reduce to 3, right? But it's going to be negative, right? Positive over negative is a negative, so that'll be minus 3. So now, notice I have it in mx plus b form. Here, m is 4 over 3, and b, be careful, b is negative 3, right? It's minus. So b would be negative 3. Notice I got my slope and my intercept. 
Now, to graph it, now that I've manipulated my equation, right, that part wasn't new. The graphing part is new, right? This graphing part is new. Manipulating the equations, that was chapter two. So, once again, I don't really know how many dashes I'll need, so I'm just going to put five in every direction. I'll put five in every direction. I start at negative three. That's on the y-axis. I'll start right here at negative three. Now, I need to use my slope. Four thirds, rise over run. I'm gonna rise four. One, two, three, and four. Now you wouldn't normally draw those hops in. I'm just drawing them for picture purposes, right? You would normally probably just count in your head. One, two, three, four up. And then we're gonna go three, we'll run. One, two, three hops to right here. This is where my next point on my graph will be based on the information I have, my slope and my intercept. So my line, my graph, will pass through these two points. So I'll draw my line, and I always like to label them 4x minus 3y equals 9. I'll label it with the original label. I always like to label with the original label. So that's slope-intercept form. Notice it helps us graph a line because we just need the equation. We don't need to make a table of values. Once you have the equation in the correct form, you can graph it immediately. Now, horizontal and vertical lines. Let's do horizontal lines first. And let's do an example of a horizontal line. Let's say we draw four dashes in each direction. And I'm going to draw a horizontal line at negative 2. A horizontal line at negative 2. So this is at negative 2. What would the formula be for this horizontal line? Notice the y value is always negative 2, no matter where I am on the line, right? When x is 3, y is negative 2. When x is negative 4, y is still negative 2. The equation is actually y equals negative 2. That's it. There is no x term in the equation of a horizontal line. It would just be y equals negative 2. Horizontal lines have no x term because it's doesn't matter what the x term is, y is always negative 2. So the horizontal line would be y equals negative 2. Now you might see this written y plus 2 equals 0. Same thing, right? I just have moved everything onto the left side. I added the 2 over, right? If I add 2 to both sides, it'd be y plus 2 and I'd have 0. Sometimes you might see it in that form as well. So that's horizontal lines. A vertical line, maybe we do the same thing, right? We'll draw some dashes in. And let's draw a vertical line at 1, right? We'll draw it at the value of 1. The formula for this one, notice once again, no matter where I am on my red line, if I'm at y equals negative 2, x is 1. If I'm up here at y equals 3, x is 1, right? x is 1 on the whole line. You will see this written as x equals 1 would be the equation of that line. Notice there's no y term because the y value never changes. Horizontal and vertical lines only have one variable in them because the other variable stays the same. And same thing as before, you might see this written x minus 1 equals 0, right? You might see everything on one side of the equation as well. So horizontal and vertical lines have equations that are fairly simplistic, right? They don't have a lot going on. It's just y equals a number or x equals a number. So make sure you understand that they're constantly 
horizontal or constantly vertical, right? x equals 1, y equals negative 2, right? Now, let's do a real world example. It says the distance d that a car travels in t hours while traveling at a rate of 40 miles per hour can be determined by the equation d equals 40t. So my equation is d equals 40t. First, graph the line d equals 40t for t less than or equal to 6. It gives me an upper cap on my time. Then use the graph to estimate the distance the car travels in t hours. Now, this equation has no x's and y's, right? It has d and t. Well, t is taking the place of x here, right? And d is taking the place of y, right? Think of it like it would normally be y equals something with x, right? This is d equals something with t. So I've just switched up the letters a little bit. Now, it says t is less than or equal to 6. 6 is going to be my largest value of t. What would be my smallest value of t? What's the least amount of time I could drive a car for? The smallest possible value of time would be 0, right? I don't go anywhere. Time can never be negative, right? Time is always 0 or positive. Now, we usually like to fill in another value in our table, right? We're trying to make a table of values here, right? We're trying to graph this equation. We were given a parameter. T was less than or equal to 6. I'll pick a number in between. Maybe I pick 2. That's a nice easy number to work with, and it's in between, right? Now, I'm going to use my equation, d equals 40t. When t is 0, distance is 0, right? 40 times 0 is 0. When t is 2, distance is 80, right? 2 times 40 is 80. And when it's 6, I get 240, right? 6 times 40 is 240, right? So I've got time and I've got distance. Now, I wanted to graph this. That's why I made the table, right? So I'm trying to use my graph. I want to graph the line. Now, notice something. There's no negative values. When I go to graph it, I can actually just consider the first quadrant, right? Quadrant 1. Now, we said t takes the place of x and d takes the place of y. Now, t, 0, 2, and 6. Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, right? Time equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That's pretty pretty standard for labeling it, right? Counting to 6. However, for distance, i got to go from 0 to 240. I'm not going to want to put 240 dashes here, am I? Maybe I'll count by 50s. 50, 100, 150, 200, and 250, right? 50, 100, 150, 200, and 250. I used values that were more easy to work with, right? I counted by 50s. You could scale it another way. You could scale it by 10s, right? You can scale things however you want, right? You can scale it by 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, right? I'd need 24 dashes then, right, to get to 240. I probably don't want to scale by 100s because then I kind of don't have enough dashes, right? I kind of want to choose a number that works fairly well with my, with my values. Now, 0, 0. That's always right here, right? 0, 0. 2, 80. Well, 80 will be somewhere around here, right? And it'll be at 2. And then 6 and 240. Well, 240 would be somewhere around there, and 6 is right there. And then I can connect them. And that's my graph, right? Notice I stopped here because my graph told me to stop at 6. It's not incorrect if you extrapolate the line in either direction, but we don't need to. If we want to just look at the part, we're just looking at this chunk, right? We actually don't care what happens outside this chunk for the question. So I graphed a real-world example. I graphed a car traveling. Now, let's do the question. It says use the graph to 
estimate the distance the car travels in four hours. Four hours is right here, right? That's four hours. Now, that is somewhere on the line right about here, right? I'm drawing that line so I can get an idea of where it is. Now, if I want to read this point, I need to go backwards to the left, right? And it looks like it's a smidge over 150. A smidge over 150. I'm trying to estimate the distance, right? Maybe I estimate the distance is... It's an estimate, so I'll use a squiggly equal sign, right? It's not exact. Maybe I think it's 155, and it's miles, right? My distance is in miles. It's probably not exactly 155, but I'm estimating, right? If I wanted to get the exact answer, I would use my equation, right? And a lot of times in science, this is what we need to do. We might have data points we've calculated through experiments, and then we connect them with a line, we don't necessarily know the equation yet, right? We don't know the equation of a random experiment we're doing, but we can estimate using our graph. Now here, I did know the equation, right? I could calculate exactly the value. If I plugged in four, I'd get the exact, but I'm trying to estimate with the graph, right? If I didn't know the equation, I could still do this, right? If I just had the graph, I could still estimate, right? Now, that's a real-world example. Now let's do one last topic, and that's parallel and perpendicular lines. Parallel lines. Parallel lines are lines with the same slope. They're lines with the same slope. Lines with the same slope. So they got the same slope. If you want to tell if two lines are parallel, you find both of their slopes. Perpendicular lines are lines that meet at a 90 degree angle. And here, these slopes, M1 times... The other slope is negative 1. If you multiply the two slopes together, you know, you have your two slopes, m1 and m2, and you multiply them together, you better get negative 1 if you want them to be perpendicular. So parallel and perpendicular, right? If we use our pens, parallel, right? They have the same slope, perpendicular, they meet at 90 degrees. So, for each of the following pairs of equations, determine if the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So, for these ones, I need to find the slopes. Well, the easiest way to find the slope of a line is to put it into y equals mx plus b form. Because then, the m, the number in front of the x, is your slope. Well, here, I've got 3x plus 6y equals 12. Well, I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. I'm trying to get into y equals mx plus b. That'll leave me with 6y, right? This will cancel. Equals, let's see, I'm going to put the x first and the y second. Now I'll divide by 6, divide by 6, and divide by 6. I'm trying to get the y alone, right? This is some chapter 2 work. We get y equals, let's see, negative over pot, it'll be negative, let's see, 3 over 6 simplifies to 1 over 2, right? Negative 1 half plus, or x plus 12 over 6 is 2. And so I get negative 1 half x plus 2. So the slope here is this number right here, right? It's mx plus b. Negative 1 half is the slope of that line. In my second example, I had negative 2x minus 4y equals 20. Well, once again, I'm going to put it in mx plus b form. I'll add 2x to both sides. Leaves me with negative 4y equals, let's see, they're both positive. I'm going to put the x first, 2x plus 20, right? Remember, you can always rearrange your terms as long as you respect the signs. Now, to get the negative 4 out of there, I'll divide by negative 4. 
divide by negative 4 and divide by negative 4. Let's see, I'll get y equals positive over a negative is a negative. 2 over 4 is 1 over 2, right? 2 over 4 simplifies to 1 over 2. Let's see, positive over negative will be negative. 20 over 4 is 5. Now, it doesn't matter that I got plus 2 and minus 5. What matters is that my slopes were the same. So in my first example, these two slopes are the same number. So they're parallel, right? Parallel. These two lines would be parallel. If I graphed them, they have a negative one-half slope. They'd probably look something like this, right? They've got a slightly negative slope, and they'd be parallel, right? Our second example, y equals 3x plus 2. Hey, sweet, 3 is the slope of that line. It's already in slope-intercept form. I already have the slope. 3. The other one, x plus 3y equals 9. Well, that one doesn't work out as well, so we'll work with this one. x plus 3y equals 9. I'm going to put a 1 in front of the x, so we can remember that there's a 1 there. And i got to move it to the other side, right? We'll subtract 1x from both sides. That'll leave me with 3y equals, let's see, negative 1x and 9, negative 1x plus 9, right? Now, I can divide both sides by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3, and divide by 3. That'll leave me with y equals negative 1 over 3, doesn't reduce, right? Negative 1 over 3x. 9 over 3, that reduces to 3. Now, this slope is right here, right? So I got 3 and negative 1 third for my slope. So they're not parallel. They could be perpendicular, though. I got to multiply them. 3 times negative 1 over 3 equals, well, let's see, I'll put this one over 1, right? 3 times negative 1 over 3 gives me negative 3 over 3, which gives me negative 1, right? Negative 3 over 3 reduces to negative 1. These lines are perpendicular. Perpendicular. Got to phone it out, right? Spell it out. Perpendicular. These lines meet at 90 degrees. If I were to graph them, the first one has a positive 3 slope. The second one had a negative one-third slope. So they would look like this, right? They're meeting at 90 degrees. Maybe if we wanted to exaggerate it, we could, you know, make that one a little steeper and see that they would be 90 degrees, right? We can think about what they would look like as a graph. Now, we've got one more example on the last page. This is parallel and perpendicular still. Now, we've got y equals 2 parentheses x plus 3 minus 5. Well, here i got to distribute first to unpack, right? i got to distribute. I'm going to get y equals 2x plus 6, right, when I bring the 2 inside. And I have minus 5. Plus 6 minus 5 would be y equals 2x plus 1, right? So here the slope is 2. In my other example, I had 2x plus 5y equals 15. Well, I've got to get it into y equals mx plus b form. I'm looking for the slope, right? I'll subtract 2x from both sides. That'll leave me with 5y equals negative 2x plus 15, right? We'll put the x first. Now, I can divide by 5 to get my y alone. I can divide by 5 and divide by 5. Let's see, I'll get y equals negative 2 over 5, negative 2 over 5x. 15 over 5 is 3. So here I get negative 2 over 5. So they're not the same, so I know they're not parallel. I have to multiply them though. Let's see, 2 over 1 times negative 2 over 5, right? 2 would be 2 over 1. I'm going to multiply my slopes. I get negative 4 in the top and 5 in the bottom. That's not equal to negative 1, right? That's not negative 1. 
So I know they're not perpendicular, so this one would be neither. It's neither perpendicular nor parallel. They don't meet at 90 degrees, and they don't have the same slope. They're somewhere in between, right? There's some other option. And that is what it looks like to find perpendicular and parallel lines. So that was an introduction to slopes and how we use them to help us with graphs. Thanks for stopping in. I will see you next time.